update for you here. And here you can see that we have Bitcoin. And a few interesting things have gone on this past week is we've broken the 46K level. This is very important. I basically stated this was a blue box that was in a buy statistically. And this was a red box, which should have been in a sell. We should have pulled back. But this flipped to blue when you broke the 46K level, which we did. And we've almost run up to around 50K, just under it. And um, we do have a congestion pattern. If you look right here, I do want to show you this. Uh, that's presenting itself. It's gone sideways. Here, maybe if we do it as a four hour, it looks a little bit neater. And I'll expand it there for you. If you see that right there, one, two, three, four, five, and you cross to the equanimity line in the trend. Um, so this at the 49,700, where is it about? Right about 49,600 actually, becomes resistance uh, in equanimity numbers. So if we break that, then the likelihood of us going all the way up to the, the low 50,000 range, like 54, um, 53,500, 53,000 uh, is very likely if we break through this. So um, that's not 50K even, that is basically um, 49,600 basically. So if we break above 49,600, and so forth. We'll probably get a fast rise that goes right up to this uh, 53, 54,000 area. And then we'll see where we go from there. Uh, but everything's very bullish. The price action on all pullbacks, it keeps getting bought. So there are buyers out there, and I think there's a lot of new money in crypto. Um, so there's not really much to do, but just wait and see. I would like to see a pullback. I would not be a buyer until you drop down to the low 40,000 range and under. To see if you get a pullback to there. That would be nice. But I, I'm just looking to buy off of this price action. I mean, these institutions are crazy. And like I said um, last month and the, the, the past couple months is that it's switched. Uh, the larger money has been plowing in fiat like crazy and just buying anything that gets sold. So normally you would expect the miners to have sold for the Chinese New Year, which is normal, and pull back the market, but that didn't happen this year because all these billionaires and hedge funds and institutions, and they've started to adopt uh, Bitcoin. So it, the market is very bright. Um, but we are at a resistance right here, and you can see this little pattern right here. It's flattened out. Its curve is flattened out. So we'll, we might see a bit of a pullback here, but we'll see. Um, I did buy at 29000 and 31500 um, Two positions I bought back, 10% and 10% here. So um, and all I'm doing here from here is just looking to buy back. So if we get a larger pullback, I'm looking to buy and hold. Um, so let's examine why. The main reason, if you see this green line that I wrote right here, I put right here at 46K, um, by breaking the 46K level, we have switched the statistics. Normally this was a buy block, which we went up and so forth, okay, fine. But this box right here uh, from early February to July, um, mid-July, uh, it, it should have been red. It should be selling that you get in here. But by breaking the 46K level, 46,000, we it flips to blue, which basically means buy, right? Uh, so statistically, you have buy, buy, and buy. You get three buy cycles coming in, going out through the year that are statistically likely to occur. And now, again, rem l let me remind you, I'm using algorithms here that are based on statistics, and normally they don't work for the, the cryptocurrency market. They work for currencies, for fiat and uh, 
and they're traded against buy and sell programs of what institutions, their, their mathematic order flow uh, as a, a whole in aggregate. And um, so now it, these algorithms are starting to work in Bitcoin. And that just basically means the market makers, the um, institutions are using their tech to come into this marketplace and gain control. And uh, that's both a good and bad thing. Um, it, it might not bode so well for retail, uh, but it's going to bode very well for adoption and for Bitcoin prices to go higher over time. And what we see here with uh, Bitcoin is we're following this mean now, which is right here. I'm going to connect that high and with the statistics and the buying blocks and, you know, going out for the rest of the year. We're going to target all the way up to 118, the upper 118,000 range, and we'll see how far along we go there. You would think that we're really overbought and we should pull back and all of that's good, but no. Um, statistically, the odds are in favor of further upside going out forward. There's a lot of people buying Bitcoin and learning the past week or two. Um, now, since they've put it all over CNBC, that's all you see, and other news channels, people are trying to learn how to buy Bitcoin. So this has become a, a popular topic and um, adoption is increasing. And the billionaires have figured out the thing that I always said, once they figure out, you know, Bitcoin's gonna really, is they figure out store of value on a digital currency. And they're just plowing in tons of money because they know all the printing that we're doing uh, on like the US dollar is going to have an impact and it's going to cause inflation and I mean when you print over 25% of your currency within one year all your existing currency within one year um, you're gonna see the effects of it and you're gonna see higher food prices um, it'll it'll translate at some point and uh, that's what's coming uh, plus the stock market is over bought so there you go. We'll see that occur. Uh, anyway, let's go on to the next one. Um, if you remember my GameStop, uh, I am in GameStop. I averaged at 55, which is the 88.6% level, and I'm just going to hold this one. I know that uh, from my experience that these uh, corporations and or you know these institutions that are holding their shorts are going to have to cover at some point. So this is like free money to me. Um, it's just when do they cover? When is it going to uh, happen? Um, well, I don't really care with stocks. I just buy and hold and I wait for it to happen. I can't predict when it's going to happen. Uh, that's a little bit more up to the market, not up to me. But let's give you the targets that I have on this. I have my 109 goes all the way up here for 50 percent and then the target zone all the way back up here above 200 so you know from an average of 55 right here this is where i'm averaged in at and i'm just gonna hold so there's not much to really do with that it's a little bit boring right now which is fine uh when these institutions do you know uh hedge their trade they will they will buy Anything that the Reddit users sell, they'll buy, they'll create a hedge, and um, then they'll cover their shorts, and you'll get your whole, the ball game, all up over again. And that's how it works. Um, so not worried about that one. Let's see. What else do we have out here? We saw the carnage in Tilray. Uh, that was amazing. The up move to the 60s range was nuts. That was uh, just insane. Um, I guess that was really a, a, a topping, you know, this bubble type of, uh, you know, the, the pot stocks went up way too much. Um, but my favorite are holding their own, like True Livia. This is my favorite favorite product uh, I use myself. And then you have Grow Generation and Harv, and Joshi, 
And then the one that I gave you was T God, and that pulled all the way back. It's almost right back to the buy zone. Look at that, that's incredible. It went up to the 60 cent range, pulls all the way back. But longer term, I think outside of this, I would be looking for it to get past here and keep going up and up. It has plenty of range. They could go all the way back to the $2 zone later on. I, I think that this is just a pullback short term and that we have lots of growth coming. And it has mainly to do with legislation in the United States because there's a broad adoption going to be you know, with the Democrats. This is, uh, this is free money, in my opinion. And uh, so I'm going to hold on to these. I'm actually going to buy the pullbacks. And um, I hope these over here pull back more. I'd like to own more of them. And we'll see. Uh, I, uh, I'm looking for a green future, <laughs> a cannabis future. Besides uh, that, uh, I do have my one negative. I, I am short Tesla. My average is now in the 700 range. My target's all the way down under 400, so, um, and maybe even down to the 200. Uh, I, I'm looking for this. I think Tesla's a bubble, and they're just way overpriced. It, it makes no sense. They're going to have to collapse at some point. Um, and, uh, you know, when Elon starts talking about. Um, having conversations with Putin. <laughs> uh, maybe that's a, a sign of instability and uh, things are going to change. He already bought into Bitcoin. That was smart, but why the hell would he want to talk to Putin in a chat? Like that clubhouse, whatever the heck that was, oh, it's kind of nuts. Um, but okay, out there in left field. Uh, let's also look at uh, silver. I'm still holding half of my silver. You guys remember way back when, when I said that this was a buy down here at the $12 range, and uh, the only thing I can think of from here is 36. Uh, I'd like to see silver still pull back down to here, down to under 20, and if it does, I'll buy back the 50% that I sold and continue to hold for this. I like it as, again, just like Bitcoin, as anti-inflationary, you know, with all the, the money that's out there, it's... Um, I mean, it's dilutive to the currencies. This has happened throughout history many times, many times before. This is nothing new. Um, you just have to look at the, you know, what's happened in the past to see what's likely to occur in the future. Um, that's one of the reasons the Fed hates Bitcoin is because of the fact that it's uh, dilutive to their efforts already, but people are doing it because it's a store of value that can offset and hedge against the dollar decline which is likely to occur, and fiats are going to go down. It's just that simple. Anyway, um, there's one out there I do want to talk about, and this is um, XRP. Very pissed at this one because I had such a, a gr great trade on this, a couple of great trades. Uh, some held. Uh, they hit their targets above here, so you guys did very well, if you remember. I was a buyer all the way down in the 20 cent range. When it went under 30 and 25, I think I averaged around 26 to 28, that, that area in there. And um, I had to uh, exit the last 25% of my position. I already hit my target when it spiked above uh, 0.37. Uh, but I had to exit um, a good portion of my position, 25% uh, of it. Even though it was a very profitable trade, I could have done much better if I was able to hold. But my exchange delisted, you know, and said, you know, started sending me threatening messages, the bastards. And it's all bullshit. And I really would like Clayton and to see what, why did they give this free money to the whales and to the institutions? Because they were just going to buy back the coin at cheap prices. Um, and you know, uh, get rid of the retail traders from the trade. Friggin' joke. It was just, uh, it's criminal. Anyway, going out in the future, I'm going to be looking for XRP to get above a dollar from here. If it was to catch up where Bitcoin is and so forth, I would look for it to break out 
and get above the dollar, that's just conservative. I would even expect it to get to two or three and to go its all time high. Where, where was it around the low, the uh, uh, mid to low three dollar range? Okay, I would look for a good portion of it to get above there. Um, a dollar is conservative. Uh, two and up, you know, we'll see. But that's what I would be looking for. Uh, I think all of this with uh, uh, the Securities Exchange Commission, I think they're going to go over and figure out they don't have any jurisdiction. They didn't have any point to actually doing this. There was no point to it. And I think they're going to get creamed in court if they do um, try to go forward. I, more than likely, they'll settle, and this is going to go right through the friggin' roof. So, um, unfortunately, certain exchanges don't have this anymore, and they're going to have to go over and relist it. You believe this shit? Oh, so irritated. So friggin' irritated. But this makes it a good buy uh, on any pullback. If you can get a move, because you do have kind of a pattern right here. If you can get a move that goes all the way back under 40... So let's say right there, you know what, why am I using that? That's stupid, right? I'm being dumb. Uh, let's see. Let's go over and draw this out. Boom. Uh -huh. <sighs> so what we have right here is this kind of bat formations and everybody knows that I like using the bat, especially when I see the volume uh, match with it. And there's a whole set of circum, you know, math that goes along with this. It. So it's just not patterns. Do not ever think that I just trade the patterns. Uh, that's a simplistic way of looking at the market. That would be like saying, um, you know, if it rains, uh, and I'm going to go over and plant uh, certain things and not paying attention to the sun, to the um, chemical balance of the soil, or to uh, maybe locusts are coming, uh, they're seasonal, and you, you're not taking into account, or the time of year, for example, for the weather. Uh, you know, there are many factors in trading. So don't think that I, I just trade triangles because I see them. They are one of the elements, okay? It's a combinatorial um, set of events. Um, but there needs to be more than one reason for something. I, I just don't go over and buy because I see a pattern. <laughs> that would be silly. But a lot of people do that because that's all the information they have. They don't understand the other elements of trading. But this right here, uh, if we get a pullback on here, um, this would be a good one to own for the future. I think you're going to get moves that go above the $1 and $2 just to catch up with where it was. And I think the cases from the United States are going to be dropped. Uh, Clayton is no longer part of the SEC. He's retired or whatever. And uh, this was his Trumpian um, uh, last parting shot. And I think it's really corrupt. And I, I would bet 10 to 1 that there's a, a reason that this was done on purpose for nefarious reasons and that uh, certain people should go to jail for this. And they should really be investigated. And it might come out in the future that's exactly what occurred. But we'll see. Um, so I am bullish on XRP. Um, but I would be looking for it to pull back. Might go up again here. Um, it's a good value longer term. So kind of a hmm one. And uh, one that I'm irritated on because you know the reasons. I had targets that both got hit in the 60 range and uh, 50 and um, but that's life. What can you do? Anyway, um, this is the update for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next time already. Bye.